Freedom is for everybody. Freedom is for the entire world. That's why CAP really appeals to me. It's a high price. CAP represents not just for people from the United States, but people all over the world, the best of us. He just believes in truth and justice and doing what's right. Nobody's better at this yeah. than CAP. Steve Rogers is Captain America. That is popcorn filmmaking at its absolute, absolute finest. Absolute finest. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker and I'm a licensed therapist. I love movies. I am Alan Seawright. I'm a professional filmmaker. I need therapy and I'm eating pie. Mmm, pie. Apple pie, because this week we celebrate our nation's birthday, and so we're going to be talking about Captain America in our Psychology of a Hero segment. Mm -hmm. So interesting thing about Captain America, people love him around the world. I lived in Asia, I lived in Mexico, I saw kids running around as Captain America. People love him, even if they're not crazy about the United States. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think it is because Captain America stands for all the things that America should stand for. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing? Yeah. I've knocked that Adolf Hitler over 200 times. He is a patriot without being a blind nationalist. adherent and nationalist to an agenda. He just believes in truth and justice and doing what's right. And decency, yeah. Which is theoretically what the United States of America stands for in practice. This is awkward. We love our country, but mm -hmm. we've got work to do. We we get that. Yeah. And, and CAP represents not just for people from the United States, but people all over the world, the best of us. Right. Especially because he goes from somebody who follows orders to somebody who questions everything, and he's going to do the right thing, and that may mean opposing his leaders or holding them accountable or even actively defying them. Yeah. Congratulations, Cap. You're a criminal. And I think that's the inroad for people who both love the United States and people who don't love the United States, is that he's willing to stick it to the people who deserve it. So, that leads us to this moment. Do you want to kill Nazis? Is this a test? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. Well, there are already so many big men fighting this war. Maybe what we need now is a little guy. I can offer you a chance, only a chance. Stanley Tucci is a national treasure, global treasure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Everything he's in, he makes better. Tucci gang, 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 gang. Some of you don't know the name, Tucci. but that's that guy from the Hunger Games. Tucci. Thanks, Stanley Tucci. Thank you for being amazing. So he says, "Do you want to kill Nazis?" And I love Steve's response. I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. Let's talk about the concept of use of violence, use of force, enjoying it versus not enjoying it. You know, Cap is always looking for a diplomatic solution first. Yeah. Always tries to talk to people first. Doesn't revel in the violence. Doesn't seem particularly happy about committing the violence. It's a last resort. It is a last resort for him. He's not excited about it. He doesn't enjoy hurting people, but he loves protecting and defending. Yeah. Not just freedom, but people who are innocent, people who are in harm's way. Mm -hmm. And whereas you have Schwarzenegger in the 80s would do these really graphic kills in like a cool one-liner. You're fired. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, not only did he kill, but he enjoyed killing. Like, he, he enjoyed, and that made him macho, and that made him manly. And Well, and John McClane in Die Hard is, like, so flippant about just <laughs> murdering people. <laughs> Hey, mother it's very funny. I, I shouldn't be laughing because we're promoting a completely different set of values. Yeah, look, it's funny to watch in a movie. If you saw someone like that in real life, oh. you would be horrified. Yeah, it's true. And Camp is someone to aspire to in yeah, reality. For sure. The serum amplifies everything that is inside. So good becomes great. Bad becomes worse.
This is why you were chosen. Because a strong man who has known power all his life may lose respect for that power. But a weak man knows the value of strength and knows compassion. Thanks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happens tomorrow, you must promise me one thing. That you will stay who you are. Not a perfect soldier, but a good man. What are your thoughts, filmmaker? Well, it's a very simple scene, very simply shot. The script is really strong and the sentiment may be a little bit idealized there. I'm not sure that every weak person who becomes strong is just and righteous. <laughs> like we saw in, in Megamind with Jonah Hill's character, was right. weak, became strong, didn't go so well. Enjoy your flight! Ah! Yeah, it, you can easily take that and abuse it. But the subtext of what he's saying is that you're already a strong man, you're just weak physically. Yeah. And, you know, some of these men who are physically strong are weak in character. Yeah. The sentiment is beautiful. It's a lovely scene, well acted. Well, and that's that's Cap's greatest strength. Not everybody who's weak, if they get, became strong, would handle it well. So there's suffering, and then there's what happens when you have success. And we were talking about this earlier, the concept of, of Cap has no power, and then he has all the power, and how his life experience has prepared him for that. What about you? And... We're having success with this channel. We're having a lot of influence. A lot of I we, guess. We Alan says to me, he's like, it's weird. We have fans. He says that to me every shoot. We've had fans for a while. And still every time. Still weird. Do you remember the weekend that we blew up? Thanksgiving of last year? I remember you calling me and saying that we had to make a pact to keep each other from becoming assholes. Yeah. <laughs> Because we went from three, th in like in like a weekend, we went from 3,000 to what was it? Like a hundred and something thousand. Yeah, in just a few days. And we were all over Thanksgiving weekend. Are you seeing these numbers? Oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. What's going on? Give thanks. <laughs> Give, <yeah. laughs> we did. And I, I had that worry. I'm like. We can't lose not only what makes the show special, but what makes us us. Right. Is at least trying to be good men. Yeah. Failed miserably. We're huge assholes. <laughs> what a bunch of a-holes. <laughs> okay. So Cap does his duty, follows orders, defeats Red Skull, and then loses Peggy because he's going to give his life for the cause, which is, you know, the hero's death trajectory that he probably assumed he was always on. Sure. Wakes up 70 years later, and Nick Fury's trying to get him out in the world. And Cap's initial reaction to all this, not hardcore, but it's fairly avoidant. It's a lot. You gonna be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I had a date. That line is the saddest line. It's the saddest ending to a movie for me. Yeah. At least a superhero movie, you know? Yeah, it's pretty grim. Right? And then it goes right from that into like the happy upbeat. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> There's a bit of a disconnect there. But he's initially avoidant, and then Fury's trying to get him back into the world. And Cap, true to his character, when he's needed, he's there. Mm -hmm. But I do want to talk about this moment. Now, if you want to follow us on social media, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. Uh, on most of those, we are therapy underscore cinema, except for on Facebook, we're just cinema therapy. Right. But you can find us, you can follow us, you can interact with us, because we love hanging out with you online. Because we're socialists. <laughs> no. That is, is that not what that social is media so is? not on brand for today's episode. Is that We're... not what social media is? <laughs> is that not what Captain America believes in? Son, just don't. Anyways, uh, so, okay. It's gonna be an hour before they can scramble the National Guard. National Guard? Does anybody you know what's happening here? Do we? You need men in these buildings. There are people inside and they're gonna be running right into the line of fire. You take them to the basement, or through the subway, you keep them off the streets. I need a perimeter as far back as 39th. Why the hell should I take orders from you? It's the most New York cop thing to ever say. <laughs> I need 
men in those buildings. We set up a perimeter all the way down to 39th Street. <laughs> Oh man, what a solid script. Also, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but you know when he uh there's the Chitauri who's like he grabs his arm and like cuts it off and holds the gun. Do you ever see the arm dump out of the gun? Did you ever No, I that? never noticed that. It's super quick. You never notice, but like it just like spills it out. Cuts the arm off, swings the gun, and the arm just goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. That is a it's brilliant great. detail. So in the Avengers, uh, Tony, because Tony's a lone wolf, he I think he kind of sees himself as the de facto leader. Yeah. But ultimately, everyone takes orders from Cap willingly, including Stark, mm -hmm. including Hulk. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash. I mean, historically, just, you know, from the comics, Cap is generally the leader of the Avengers. Obviously, in the comics, they've broken down and reformed, and there's been 97 different Avengers teams. But Steve Rogers is the captain. He has an innate sense of leadership, of what needs to get done, yeah. and he's the best person to sort of marshal the forces. Yeah. And, you know, Tony is arrogant and narcissistic. You can watch our episode, Psychology of a Hero, on Tony Stark. Yeah. It's right there. It's excellent. But Tony is also smart enough to realize very quickly that when we're in combat, nobody's better at this yeah. than Cap. So I'm just going to let him tell me what to do yeah he's probably got a better it's experience it's confidence mm -hmm. but it's also he's not gonna ask people to do things he won't do himself right especially when it comes to giving people orders or this is what needs to happen now if you're if you're managing a team it needs to be collaborative but ultimately you know we've got a team at cinema therapy different pe people play different roles we all have a voice in what happens but depending on the role whoever fills that role they have final say and yeah. this is what happens here that's that's how this team runs and the only way that works is if people act in integrity, if they're willing to listen to others and, and receive their feedback and not just say, I know best and here I go. And Cap is both those things. And he's willing to do the work. Yeah. He's not sitting up there like Loki in the tower telling everyone else what to do. Now, Loki ultimately joins the fight, but I think that's just for vanity. And in Winter Soldier, which, oh, how much do we love Winter Soldier? 3,000. Ooh, well played. I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. Why is Winter Soldier arguably the best MCU movie? Well, for one, they snuck a 70s paranoia thriller into my comic book movie. Like Three Days of the Condor, stuff like that? Yeah, Three Days of the Condor, All the President's Men. And they did a fantastic job of it. Two, the action sequences are absolutely spectacular. But the biggest reason is they take Captain America and completely deconstruct his entire belief system and worldview and he responds in the most Captain America way possible, which is to not just hold fast to what he was doing before. Yeah. He holds to his principles, which means what I was doing was wrong without my knowing it. Yeah. So now I'm going to fix all of those problems and do something else. It's the highest integrity possible response. So speaking of loyalty versus integrity, uh -huh. Captain America was loyal to America. Right there in the name, and he's yeah. the star-spangled man, right? And in Winter Soldier, he realizes that loyalty to principle is more important than loyalty to a group. Right. And Cap, don't get me wrong, I'm sure he still loves his nation, he still loves the people, but he's not loyal to the government. Mm -hmm. He's not loyal to all these people who are corrupt. He's no longer taking orders. No, he's loyal to his ideals. Exactly. And I think that's why he resonates globally. And the fact is, if you're a part of a, any group religion, political party, family group, and they are saying, in order to be part of us, you need to do something that you know here to be wrong. If you know it's wrong, then the obligation is to do what's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But my favorite moment in Winter Soldier is when he's uncovered that S.H.I.E.L.D. is Hydra. Yeah. Or at least there's Hydra all throughout I'm it. Like insinuating itself, yeah. And he does a call to action to a bunch of people who are not soldiers. Right. You know, a bunch, bunch of analysts and techies and yeah. you know, whoever. And we get this moment. Attention, Attention all shield agents. This is Steve Rogers. You've heard a lot about me over the last few days. Some of you were even ordered to hunt me down. But I think it's time you know the truth. So Steve Rogers gives good speech. Mm -hmm. Shield is not what we thought it was. It's been taken over by Hydra. Alexander Pierce is their leader. Striking <laughs> insight crew are Hydra as well. 
I don't know how many more. But I know they're in the building. They could be standing right next to you. They almost have what they want. Absolute, Absolute control. control. They shot Nick Fury. And it won't end there. If you launch those helicarriers today, Hydra will be able to kill anyone that stands in their way. Unless we stop them. I know I'm asking a lot. The price of freedom is high. It always has been. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. And if I'm the only one, then so be it. But I'm willing to bet I'm not. Did you write that down first? Or was it off the top of your head? He gives good speech. I literally got goosebumps. Right? Well, <laughs> the whole thing. Oh, oh man. Damn. And then right after this, Frank Grillo comes and he orders the analyst to launch, you know, to launch right. the helicarriers. I'm not going to launch those ships. Captain's orders. Move away from your station. Cap's orders. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, so good. It's so good. I think we can only inspire people if we walk the walk. Yep. And the price of freedom is high, but it's a price I'm willing to pay. Freedom is for everybody. Freedom is for the entire world. And it's a high price. It might mean giving our lives. More often, it means taking stances that people make fun of us or challenge us or hate us for. Yeah. Right? But we have to do what's right. And that's why Cap really appeals to me. So we get to Age of Ultron where we realize something. So not only does Cap not really have a life. Right. We all admire Cap's integrity, but he's also kind of a stick in the mud about it. Language. Language. He's, he's kind of a blowhard. Oh, Whoa. Language. Hey. Wow. You got some acorns on you, kid. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the language moment. How does that inform the character? You know, it's undercutting drama with humor, but it's also telling you things about who and what he is and what he's trying to be. Like, he recognizes. He's like, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys, it just slipped out. <laughs> just slipped out. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's such a great little moment of, like, adjusting what his guiding principles are. Like, yeah. his core principles are staying the same, but, you know, all this stuff that worked in the 40s. Right. <laughs> we could adapt and grow. We well, could learn some stuff. Well, and if he chooses not to use language, like, that's fine. But, sure. But the, the thing is, no matter where you fall on the issues, you believe strongly that this is the right way to be. Mm -hmm. But then you try and impose that on other people. Right. Right. And that was Cap early on, for sure. I, by Age of Ultron, he's trying to catch himself. He's trying to. But this scene with Tony really, really shows us where he's at. I'm going to miss him, though. And you're going to miss me. There's going to be a lot of manful tears. <laughs> a lot of manful tears. It's such a Joss Whedon line. Yeah? Well, it's time for me to tap out. Maybe I should take a page out of Barton's book. Build Pepper a farm. Hope nobody blows it up. The simple life. You get there one day. I don't know. Family. Stability. Guy who wanted all that went in the ice 75 years ago. I think someone else came out. A tech bro. <laughs> you all right? I'm home. <laughs> so we talked about this in our Stark episode. Tony's journey is from selfishness to utter altruism. Yeah. And Cap is the reverse. Yep. But at this point in his journey, Cap sees total altruism, total selflessness as a virtue, but he wants nothing for himself. Right. He is just completely devoting his life to others, which sounds like a beautiful ideal. It's actually not a very balanced way to live your life. Mm -mm. But there's a couple quick points I want to make. The first is at Peggy Carter's funeral. I asked her once how she managed to master diplomacy and espionage in a time when no one wanted to see a woman succeed at either. And she said, compromise where you can. But where you can't, don't. Even if everyone is telling you that something wrong is something right. Even if the whole world is telling you to move, it is your duty to plant yourself like a tree, look them in the eye and say, no, you move. 
That is the mission statement for Steve Rogers' life. That is absolutely it. A lot of people don't like the little quasi Steve Rogers Sharon Carter romance. Mm-hmm. They think it doesn't work. It falls flat. He should. His heart belongs to Peggy. All these things. Here's why I like it. When he kisses her, even though it doesn't go anywhere because all sorts of other stuff happens, I think that's the moment where he's like, it actually might be nice to have something for myself. Yeah. You know, to have a relationship, to have a person in my life. Now, in Civil War, we see the rift between Tony and Cap, and Cap doing anything and everything to protect Bucky, even sacrificing his relationship with Tony Mm -hmm. to protect Bucky. And I want to talk about the moment where Tony says to Steve... That shield doesn't belong to you. You don't deserve it. My father made that shield. And then Cap drops the shield. It's interesting because we've been talking about loyalty versus integrity, right? Mm -hmm. And here, throughout Civil War, is being incredibly loyal to Bucky. At times, it looks like at the expense of his integrity. Yeah. Because Bucky is a terrorist now. He's the Winter Soldier. He's doing all these terrible things. But Steve, you know, rightly or wrongly, is loyal to Bucky because he knows he wouldn't do those things. Yeah. And, you know, maintains his integrity because he's correct. He is right. Yeah. When he drops the shield, that is him maintaining his integrity, maintaining his loyalty to Bucky and saying, look, I'm going to choose to remain loyal to my friend who has done nothing wrong. He's a victim. Yeah. My integrity is worth more to me than my entire identity is as Captain America. See, this is why I love having these conversations because my take on it is completely different, but I think that's totally valid. I look at this as one... He doesn't feel worthy of the shield because he nearly killed one of his best friends to protect another best friend. True. And the fact is, even if he feels right that he did right by Bucky, like it's hard. He doesn't feel like this upright. He just did something kind of awful, right? Granted, you could say Tony made him do it, and I'm not going to argue the point. One thing Cap does is he uses his shield to disable instead of to kill. (laughs) Which is something John Walker, you could learn a lesson from. I see him dropping the shield because he doesn't feel worthy. Also, between Captain America Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War, Steve's trust in government is completely eradicated. Yeah. The things they've asked him to do, the corruption, the manipulation. And I think he has lost his faith in America as an institution at that moment. Uh, Here's how I know I'm right. You may argue in the comments that I'm wrong. That's fine. (laughs) Here's how I know I'm right. In Infinity War, he introduces himself as... I am Groot! I am Steve Rogers. He's not Captain America anymore. Right. And I think to him, he's now fighting for the world. Mm -hmm. And he's fighting for his friends. I think he's lost his faith in America, which is such a dark thing to do with that character. Yeah. From a storytelling perspective, it's what you have to do. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is so good at in each individual movie, and then over the course of several films, taking our characters to their darkest, most depressing, worst place. Yeah. What can you do to Captain America that brings him lower than no longer trusting America? Yeah, absolutely. And so this brings us to something that really, really speaks to me. After all that happened, Making amends happens pretty fast. Pretty quickly, yeah. And you might think, well, that's a cheat. It took so much effort to break the friendship. Why should it be so easy? Well, they've both been through hell already. Also, because it took so much effort to break that friendship. Yeah. I find in my life that when I've had a friendship for a long time, we're really, really close, and it takes a lot to ruin it, rebuilding it goes a lot quicker because you've got all that history of it being good before it got bad. And you both want it. Right. I mean, Cap and Tony both want this to be okay. When Tony brings out the shield... Tony, I don't know. Why? I don't think Steve putting the shield back on says, I still trust the American government. No. I think what it says is, I love my nation, I love these ideals, and I'm going to represent. And this is true whether you are from France or from England or from India. This is true whether you're Catholic or Lutheran or Jewish or Muslim or atheist, LGBT, you know, black, white, whatever you are. We. It, it would be nice to live in a world where... Nobody judges you for any characteristics other than just how you show up and who you are. Right. The unfortunate truth of the human condition is every one of us represents. You know, I, I think of that song from uh, Hamilton. History has its eyes on you. 
the world has its eyes on you. The people that you interact with, you represent. And to me, Cap taking up the shield is not saying, America's great and all of its decisions are wonderful. <laughs> I think he's saying, I love my people. I love these ideals. A lot of others are mucking it up, but the best I can do is represent it well. And that's a message that transcends the United States of America. That's a message for all of us. <laughs> this is such a great scene. I love that up Good angle too on mm -hmm. camera. Okay, here's. Come on, Cap. And Thor's little. <laughs> <laughs> so nervous. And right there, that little <laughs> smirk, <laughs> that little tiny smirk. Uh -huh. And then, of course, Thor's like, ah, oh, yeah, never worried. <laughs> <laughs> never doubted for a second. I knew it. Ah, oh, so good. That's perfection. Okay, and let's let's watch the next clip as well. Man, my theater went so nuts. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this movie in theaters again. That was the best experience. Boom! I love that frame! Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Oh, nice. I just... <laughs> the Frisbee! Oh, it's so great. It's so good. That is popcorn filmmaking at its absolute, absolute finest. Absolute finest. I... Oh, man. <laughs> so much fun. And just the the weight and the beefiness like the lightning when he pulls the lightning up and then like slams it down yeah, on him you yeah. just feel like it's just crushing him to the ground <laughs> oh, oh i love fantastic. that scene okay so do you think cap could lift the hammer you said you you thought he could oh, originally yeah. at the party he absolutely could he was he was sparing thor's feelings or was, what i don't know if he was sparing thor's feelings or just because he had so much integrity he's like i got a shield i'm good yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't need to do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then he, there's no grandstanding, there's no boasting. Yeah. So, of course, after this, he decides to finally do something for himself. He lays down his arms. He lives a life of peace with Peggy. What do you think of that as an ending for Cap as a character? I think the way Endgame wraps up Cap's character and Iron Man's character as not the exact opposites of where they started, yeah. But they both landed in a very healthy place for themselves that was very different from the place that they started. Yeah. And Cap finally taking some time for himself. I mean, did anybody walk out of that movie theater feeling like, ah, oh, he didn't earn that? Right. <laughs> Everyone was very satisfied. I know I was, I was definitely satisfied. I love Captain America. I love Steve Rogers. I love what Chris Evans brought to the role. I'm glad they rolled the dice on him because he played a lot of cocky, arrogant characters before. Yeah. Oh, you're hot. Why, thank you, so are you. And I'm not afraid to cry. He did humble and earnest and integrity so well. Character means a lot to me because I, you know, he goes from saying language to when he's fighting himself, <laughs> you know. Oh, you got me yeah. He's like, oh, you gotta be shitting me. And then <laughs> he's like, that is America's ass. And my favorite thing is all the times where he's like, I can do this all day. And then when he finally yeah, sees Yeah, I know, him, I know. <laughs> when he sees himself doing it, he's like, yeah, I know. I know. The idea of journeying from someone who's trying to be a good person but is kind of a goody two shoes mm -hmm. to still holding to your integrity but lightening up a bit is very much my journey. So that lands a lot with me. As your roommate in college, I can attest to the. Just a smidge of self-righteousness. <laughs> it's, it's true. Just a smidgen. It was there. So Yeah. Uh, why, what do you think about Cap? Why do you love him? I see a lot of myself in Captain America because I'm a very like mission-oriented, driven person, right? I have a thing that I'm supposed to do, and I am very focused on it and have always been that way. And my life has been kind of a – really a process of kind of lightening up a little bit. Learning yeah. to roll with the punches a little bit, and um, I've I've never had a, a problem with self interest. I've always kind of yeah a bit of a narcissist. It's okay. <laughs> I'm working on it. Go to therapy. You know his journey is so healthy emotionally. Not a perfect soldier, but a good man, and ends in such an interesting place that. 
is not at all what you would have expected anywhere up until, you know, very near the end yeah. of Avengers Endgame. So if you're looking to become more like Cap, actually building character strengths and virtues in your life is a process, and I as a therapist am here to help you. I've created the Strengths Builder Guide for Captain America, and those are available on our membership site, which you can find right here. The Strength Builder Guides give you actual exercises and tools to develop these types of virtues in your life and to be this type of hero. That's why it's the Cinema Therapy Heroes site. Checky, checky, likey, likey. Become a hero or a superhero. So until next time, the price of freedom is high, but it's a price I'm willing to pay. That is America's ass. Really? That didn't even... And watch, watch movies. movies. Nice. <laughs> it is America's ass, though. Yeah, Did you see is, that thing? It's beautiful. Popping. It's it's so beautiful for mm -hmm. spacious thighs. <laughs> That is America's ass.